I am going to walk through number 23 on page 367. Um, this is an example of integrating a um, composite function. So if you remember, a composite function is just a function within a function, right? So this is a composite function right there. Um, so we are integrating a composite function. So when we're integrating a composite function, it doesn't actually look like this. It looks like um, it looks like the function after we've derived it. So when we derive when we derive a composite function, if you remember this, it's going to look like this times the derivative of g of x dx, right? So basically, this is in this form. Um, what we want to do is we want to substitute something in for g of x um, so that we're not dealing with a composite function. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to find uh, g of x and we're going to substitute u in for g of x. When we substitute u in for g of x, we have to find a du, that is g of x, or g prime of x dx, right? So basically, once we sub this, it's going to look something like this. Now this is much easier to deal with than this, which is why we use substitution. So we're going to look over here, we're going to find what our g of x is and what our g prime of x dx is. So uh, the key for looking for this uh, is usually if you see a function around another function, if that makes any sense. So you see that the square root sign covers this whole function here. So that's kind of the giveaway that that's our g of x. Another way you can think about it, if you want to think about it in terms of deriving, you know that um, x to the third, when derived, is going to be 3 times x squared. So you know this is uh, somehow related to the derivative of this. So this is going to be your g of x, and this will be your g prime of x. So I'm going to sub u in for uh, x cubed plus 3. And if you take the derivative of u, which is the derivative of this, we get 3x squared dx. 3 is just going to 0 when we derive it, so I, I didn't bother writing that. Um, so now I can rewrite this in terms of u. So I have, I'm going to, so I have to get rid of this 3 somehow. So I'm going to multiply this whole function by 1 third. Because 1 third times a third is going to, or 1 third times 3 is going to equal 1. So again, writing this in terms of u will look like that. So we've subbed everything in. Now we actually have to integrate it. So uh, we can use our product rule of integration to pull out this one third. So now we're just dealt, dealing with u to the negative one half times du. Um, so I got u to the negative one half because um, u over u was u to the negative one half. Um, so again, integrating this one third times uh, u negative one half plus one because it's the opposite of deriving. So we're adding one instead of subtracting one, and then we have to um, divide by what's in the exponent spot uh, to compensate for bringing that down when we derive. Uh, and then this is all plus c. Remember to do this, this is important. Um, so now we just simplify, right? One third, um, two, so negative one half plus one is just one half, and when you divide by one half, it's just multiplying by two. Uh, and then u to the one half plus c, so two over three uh, times the square root of u. And now we just sub in this for u, right? And we don't have a du down here. 
so we don't have to bother with this anymore. We basically just do the du so that we get that one third there. So we know what to what to multiply by to get rid of that. Um, so again, no du, so I don't have to plug in du, but I will plug in for u. So two over three square root of x cubed plus three. Uh, plus C. So there you go. That is how you do number 23. Um, and you'll use the same process for uh, any composite function, um, which is most of 21 through uh, basically 51.